Father God, in Jesus' name, we're so grateful and so thankful for strength for today and those that have tuned in this morning. And we pray that you will perform your word in giving us strength as you do every day. Through the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray for his sake. Amen. And the New King James Version, St. John 10 and 27 says, My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about the voice of God, a hearing from heaven. Regardless of where you have been called to serve, it is essential that you hear from heaven. Every usher needs to know the voice of God. Every dog greeter needs to know the voice of God. Every uh, children's church worker needs to know the voice of God. For every singer and musician need to know the voice of God. Every person who works in any area of ministry should know the voice of God. Well, you think about it. Why should people wait to, until the pastor calls a prayer line to receive a miracle? They ought to be healed when they are shaking the hand of an usher. They should receive something special from God when a greeter says good morning. A tiny baby with a fever should be healed when the mother places a child in the loving arms of a nursery worker or a children's church worker who has been walking and talking with the Lord. You may ask, well, Brother Huey, uh, why doesn't it happen that way? The reason is simple. Most well-meaning Christians don't give the work of the church priority, the priority that it deserves. On Sunday, they rush to the mall. On Saturday, rather, they they rush to the malls, stop at their favorite restaurant, and make it home in time to watch something important on television. Then their eyelids get heavy and they fall asleep. They are too exhausted to think about the ministry they've committed to the next day and too tired to pray. When you take the ministry of help seriously, you will find time to seek the face of God during the week, especially on Saturday night. You will get alone with the Lord and say, tomorrow I'm going to be greeting people, and I, and I want your anointing to flow through me. In the morning, I'll be working in the nursery with children's church, and I want every child to sense the presence, sense your presence, God. Tomorrow I'm going to be the first person some one will see when they drive into the parking lot. Lord, cause them to see Jesus in me when I'm directing traffic. Lord, I've been asked to sing tomorrow. Let your anointing flow out of me. Uh, let them sense your presence. Praise the name of Jesus. Uh-huh. Well, in about, well, well where, where do we start? Knowing God's voice is not some perplexing, mysterious process. It simply takes spending time in his presence. Turn off the television. Get off the phone. Log off social media. Turn off the computer. Begin praising and worshiping God and communing with him in a heavenly language. Read and meditate on his word. If you, if you simply read his word, you'll begin to hear his voice because God speaks through his word. You'll soon know that God will what he will and will not do. And you can find guidance and direction. His ways are not hidden or obscure. Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. In John 8 and 20, 8 and 12. The more time you spend in the word of God, the easier it will be to discern his voice. The Bible says in Hebrews 4 and 12. For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and of marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intent of the heart. The word will make a distinction between your emotions, your mind and spirit. We can know when God is speaking to us. Likewise, the Lord expects you to hear his voice. Jesus declared, my sheep hear my voice, and, and I know them, and they follow me. Before Christ ascended into heaven, he said, nevertheless, 
I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. <laughs> but if I depart, I will send him to you. In St. John 16 and 7, <laughs> and he added, However, when he, the spirit of truth, has come, he will guide you into all truth. Uh, for he will not speak on his own authority, but whatsoever he hears, he will speak. And, and he will tell you things to come. St. John 16 and 13. One of the reasons the Holy Spirit was sent to us uh, was to speak to us concerning the things of God. Uh, are you committed to knowing the voice of God? Uh, well, you can, and you'll find it's not just for the church. Uh, you need it for your very existence and well-being. I'm convinced uh, that knowing his voice uh, helps us in the area of divine protection. Don't ignore his still small voice uh, that may whisper, just sit at this traffic light another 10 seconds. Don't take off right now. He could be protecting you from a car that will be zooming by within five seconds, running the red light. And the Lord will tell you what to look for a job because he knows who's hiring before it's announced in the help wanted section of the newspaper or indeed or any other uh, online job posting. He can show you how to be successful. For he said, I am the Lord your God who teaches you to profit and to lead you the way you should go. Isaiah uh, 48 and 17. The Holy Spirit will lead you in investing your money and even tell you who your partners uh, should be in business. Every aspect of your life should be directed by the Lord. That's why it's vital that you know his voice. Let me bring some clarity here. God isn't going to tell you when to go to the restroom. You should know that instinctively. He isn't going to tell you when to go to work. If you're employed, you should already know your schedule. We are to go about our daily affairs doing what we're supposed to do. However, we should always be ready to hear from headquarters and obey him. It's like a police officer. He goes about his job doing what he's supposed to do. But at any time his superior calls on the police radio, he alters his plans and obeys the new assignment. And so it is with the Christian. God isn't going to tell you every little detailed thing to do. But don't get so spooky in relating to God or people. Praise the name of the Lord. Learn to listen to the Lord and flow and within the direction he gives. Remember, his ways are always higher than ours. There are many in the church, however, who do not feel ready to be helpers. They know there are adjustments to be made. They must first make it in their lives. Let me give you this advice. Don't wait too long to make the necessary changes. Begin by totally yielding to the Lord and let him know you're ready to receive what he has to say. God doesn't want you to warm the pew forever. The Holy Spirit didn't draw you to the body of Christ to fold your arms and do nothing. You are gifted and talented. Even though you may have to sit under ministry for a length of time, and have some imperfections uh, purged from your life. And God eventually is going to tell you it's time, <laughs> it's time, it's time to put your hand to the plow. Are you ready <laughs> to enter his service? And it, re- it begins with knowing the voice of God. And every day I'm telling the Lord, Lord, <laughs> Whatever you're doing, don't do it without me. Lord, if you're healing in this place, don't do it without me. Don't do it without me. Lord, 
if you're blessed in this, in this time, don't do it without me. I'm going to listen to your voice. Yes, my Lord, I heard. Hallelujah on strength for the day. Uh, one sister was talking about, amen, the Lord de- de- directed her in some stock, amen, and she obeyed, and she didn't lose money, she made money. So I'm getting told to that sister and asking her how to invest the little money that I have, amen, God will talk to you. Somebody said he walks with me, and he talks with me, and he tells me I am his own, now, Lord, me, now, Lord, these are your people today. Let them know your voice in the name of Jesus, voice that will protect them, voice that will lead and guide them. Lord, the voice that will heal them. Give them the spirit of obedience to your voice, we pray, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen and amen.